Compton Tools are cropping Freeze a party coming Move around like Fresh fresh when the school is out When the booze is up When the sun is down the Enjoy the ride Got some pillows in the Chevy Hey, hey. It's like a dollar Low in the Navy hey. 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 Take your time Let me know when you're ready hey. 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 Couple months I've been messing with this hey. 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 Open for plants tonight So now that I've done all the clean stuff and don't have to get my hands dirty, Ash is going to get in there and drain the oil out of this auto. Who knows how bloody filthy it's going to be because we haven't touched it. But she's going to drain that out. Luckily these have a nice little drain bung, so happy days for us. It makes life a lot easier. Um, yeah, we'll make a mess over it. It's going to be sick. So we'll pop that out, get that draining, stick that plug back in there so it doesn't leak all over the floor. Um, and our next kind of steps from there, we've got lines running to the front and then one over this side, up in there somewhere. So they'll have to be popped off and we'll be completely disconnecting those. And they run right up to the front behind the intercooler. I don't know how well you'll be able to see up in there, but there's actually an auto trans cooler that came on these the factory, which is pretty cool. It's actually pretty cool. So we are going to pull all this stuff out and that's what this whole episode is about we're going to be pulling all of the auto stuff out of the car essentially all of it and then that'll prep us for the next part of the video so uh, the exhaust will probably come out as well to make life a bit easier um, but yeah when we get up to that stage we'll pick the camera back up and tell you guys what we've been doing so here goes ash making a mess i'm not gonna be able auto. to do it the first go i'm so bad at undoing these ones here we go and i don't think this is i don't know if this is it. all righty so ash is going to take this bung off you can go for it now <laughs> i mean i always usually just eat on a pop but it's already loose already quite loose well it wasn't leaking so that's good so let's see how filthy this stuff is it's going to be in mint from memory condition. it's not too bad not that bad. Yeah. Except it's, still... it's been like sitting in the car for two years doing nothing. Yeah, it's still red. It's not black. So it's a bit browny, but looks pretty good. So that's not bad. We'll let this drain, chuck the bung back in, and get back to you guys shortly. So that big dog's all drained. And I should just nip that up now so it's not going to leak. We'll give that a quick wash down just so it doesn't drip anything on the floor. But now that the trans is empty, we can safely pull out the tail shaft and not have anything spill all over the floor. Um, but yeah, I'll get Ash back on the camera, start on doing a few things, and yeah, we'll see how we go. What I'm going to try to do is, if everything goes to plan, we'll be able to pull all this stuff out without having to move the exhaust. But if we get stuck, we'll pull it off. Obviously, it's not that hard, but... We'd rather just not pull it off if we don't have to. So we'll see how we go. Hopefully things go to plan. Now that I'm looking at it, it's not going to work. So we're going to pull this part off. We're going to undo this two bolt flange and this two bolt flange and pull out that little section there just so we can feed the tail shaft down past that. Hopefully the dump pipe will be fine, but when we get to that stage, we'll get to that stage. So I'll quickly pull that out and then we can get this tail shaft out of the way. So we just pulled out that little section of the exhaust just to give us some more room. Next thing we're going to be doing is those four bolts, which aren't a 14, they're a 12. So that's just a little bit here that holds the thingy on. I already had a 12 in my hand, that was a 12 and 14. Clever. <laughs> so, Do you want a gun? What's that? Do you want a gun? That nah, should be alright, just loosen these off and zip them off by hand. So this just holds the, it doesn't really hold anything, it's more of a protective, I guess, barrier against that tail shaft. If anything happens, it can't drop and hit the ground, in theory. 
So we'll get this out of the way, give us some more room and then two bolts there, four bolts at the back and then just slides out the back of the gearbox and happy days. All right, four bolts, that bit's out of the way. We'll sit that aside, hit the bolts so don't lose them. Next thing from there, as I was saying, we'll just nip these two so they're undone. We won't undo them fully, and then we can undo these four bolts. For these four, I'll probably get Ash to jump up in the car and operate the handbrake, um, just so we can crack them all. Hopefully they're not hectic tight. Um, if they're not too bad, we can always just use a pry bar to hold it in place, but if not, we'll get Ash to jump in the car and go from there. But it's gonna be a bit of a uh, two-person job, so a bit of a poo job, <laughs> two person jobs, so we'll get this tail shaft out and then get back to you guys. Yep. All right, so since we were talking to you guys last, we've taken the tail shaft out. We've now got that sitting over there on the floor um, and we've just kind of done a bit of work off camera just because it's all fiddly stuff that you can't really see. Uh, this auto loom, that's all been disconnected. There's a few 12 and 10 mil bolts holding little brackets and stuff on, uh, but all quite simple stuff. Just start at the back and work your way forward, unclip all the loom, and then that just hangs down at the front and you've got a couple of wires going to your starter, um, which obviously have to be disconnected anyway because it's connected to the gearbox. Uh, like I was saying, I haven't done one of these before, but by the looks of things, this lower plate on the transmission actually slides out and is separated from the top. So I'd assume our access to the torque converter bolts are uh, gonna be through there. So just undo a couple of the engine bracket bolts, that plate should slide out and give us access to the torque converter. Uh, but before we get too ahead of ourselves, uh, I'm going to undo these auto lines, trace them right back to the front and pull out the factory auto trans cooler. So if we're lucky we should be able to slip all that stuff out without pulling the intercooler off, but we'll see how we go. We're going to have a fiddle with that and see what happens. So we've got these two bolts here that are holding the auto trans line, just a little bracket that goes to that cooler, so you'll have to start undoing those two. When you follow the lines along, you'll have a couple of lines going to your radiator, which we're going to have to pull those off and just drain all the fluid out the bottom of the radiator. Um, it's not going to matter being manual anyway, it just means we're going to have no fluid in there, which is fine. Next spot we're going to have to undo is these two bolts here that go to that bracket that also supports the auto trans lines. Follow it further along and we've got yet another bracket sitting up in there on the sump. So this would be the case of undoing those bolts, pull the bracket out, put the bolts back in. Now, they are small, so don't ever tighten them and snap them. Won't be a good day. Uh, that looks like all the brackets that is on the motor side. They will come back. We've got two 17mm banjo bolts that will undo, and then the line should pop out. Then we can have a play trying to get that cooler out. So another little update with where we're at. We've got the oil cooler out for the auto trans. It just had two bolts at the bottom there and one on a stud at the top. Um, even if you've got a return flow cooler on the front, these slide out real easily without damaging anything. Um, and then you've got one hose that you disconnect going to that hard line there. Uh, now that that's all out of the way, we can pull those hoses or the banjo fittings off from the motor. And I've disconnected the mounts that are connected to the motor. Well, sorry, the banjo bolts to the gearbox, the mounts are off the motor. So, now we can pull all these lines out all the way. So, as I was saying, banjo bolt one on the other side there and then we should be able to pull these lines all the way back and out. Fingers crossed it's that easy. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Alrighty, so we've got our banjos undone on both sides. This one's a bit caught up in there but we'll slip him out. Maybe. If we're lucky. Maybe not. Okay, there we go. So there we go, both our banjos are out and if all goes to plan this should just pull out straight out the back. Should, if we're lucky. It's looking good so far. Oh, it's stuck. It's not looking good. Um. Alrighty guys, we had to get both of us working on this to get them out. So I had to put the camera down unfortunately, but got them both out in the end and the trick was those two little sections there that hold the hoses together, that's where the mounts are that go to the sump. Highly recommend undo both of those before you try to slide it out, and it gives you heaps of room. You will not get out with those mounts still attached. Um, you could take the hoses off the end there, they didn't really make a difference, it was more those two mounts. So 
when you guys do it, recommend to just undo those two and it'll make your life heaps easier. But they all just slide right at the back, one big assembly. So now that that's out, we can crack on with pulling this auto out. Alrighty. So you can probably see on the back of our starter the little spade up there and a little post, a little stud. So there's a 12 mil nut that goes onto that stud there and holds that positive on. So you're gonna have to pop that off and then pop off the little spade connector. And then you've got two bolts to hold this starter in, one underneath and one hidden over the top there. With a 14 mil ratcheting spanner, you can really easily get to that top bolt. Um, you feed the spanner behind the column and then you just grab on the spanner and pull it down. You should be able to crack that bolt quite easily. And then both of those out, that can pull your starter out. And then from there, we're gonna start working our way around on these bottom bolts for the transmission. Hopefully by undoing these two and then those two on our engine brackets should give us enough clearance to slip this plate out so we can get the torque converter bolts. Hopefully that's how it goes, but we'll let you guys know if not, if we do have to release those bolts up on the sides there, which is no problems anyway because they're quite easy to get to. But I'm going to start undoing some bolts and we'll let you guys know how we go just so you guys can follow along and do the same. Um, another thing I've noticed is for this dipstick, there's another bolt holding it up on the back of the head so probably gonna drop the motor down uh, drop the car down and have a look on the back of the motor and should be able to all right so as you guys can probably see I've dropped these support brackets right out of the way they've got two bolts right at the back on the motor that actually holds them on they are really easy to get to from down here so easiest thing I found to do you undo your four going to the gearbox at the bottom and then up on the motor just undo the front two bolts so it allows you to swing the arms out of the way the rear one can stay in and I recommend leaving those in so these mounts don't get lost or you forget to put them in by doing that you can swing these right down and that bottom cover slides out and it reveals the access to the torque converter so really easy to get to so we're going to jump on those now if you haven't done this before um, you want to have someone at the torque converter undoing the bolts and someone at the front with a bar on the balancer just so the motor can't try to turn over otherwise you'll be there all day trying to crack these things so i don't know how many there are i'd say there's probably about four or five bolts but we're gonna first go up and get this dipstick out so it's out of the way then we'll get the torque converter bolts out under the rest of the trans bolts or the tra um the bell housing bolts drop them out and the box is ready to come out so exciting times we're going to drop this down and get that dipstick out. Okay, so it turns out there's actually a bolt, I believe, at the top of this transmission that goes to the bell housing, also holds the top of that dipstick tube in. So we'll find that out soon enough. Regardless, we're going to stick a pole under this um, and undo the trans mount so we can get a bit of angle on it and actually get to those bolts. Um, and yeah, undo around the bell housing, pop those out. Uh, well, we're going to do the trans tube first. Um, and we've got the torque converter bolts all done, so they're all off, ready to go. Um, but yeah, should be good once we've got those bolts out around the bell housing, this thing should be ready to drop out. Where are you going? So pretty much what I'm using here is, you can see a big bar and a shitload of extensions, and then a uni joint on the end with the 4mm socket. And by lowering down the transmission, it gives me access to the top of those bolts and you can easily get to them from down the side of the transmission. You don't have to get your hands all cut up and you can actually get to them easily. If you don't drop the transmission down, you're definitely gonna struggle big time to try and get any of them out. This just makes life a lot easier. And same goes in reverse for getting the bolts back in again when you're putting the transmission back together. So it just makes life easy. These look like a pretty cruisy gearbox. Looks like there's two more bolts on top. Well, there is only two bolts on top and then the two on the side. If that's all there is, then that's awesome for us. It's gonna make life very easy. But let's quickly grab that other bolt, which has just got stuck up there. And I believe that is the bolt that holds our transmission lipstick tube in. So I've unthreaded it, it's just a bit caught because it's stuck against the tube or the bracket that holds the tube. Go. So there's that bad boy. Okay. So dipstick just pops up, and it will come out the bottom. Just, but we're going to wait till we yeah. drop the gearbox out, so we don't damage anything. 
So essentially now that we're at this stage, we've got one bolt on each side. We don't have a transmission jack here, so we're just gonna use an old drum. Sit the trans on the drum, undo the two side bolts, and we should be good to take the transmission out. So we'll set the camera up on a tripod, and we'll have a crack at that. Just so you guys are aware that are doing this at home, I just noticed before I was about to drop this out that there's also another plug slash wire coming off the top of the gearbox. Probably just make it out at the top there. Um, I can't see what's on top of the gearbox, but I'll have a quick look after it's actually out of the car. But this plug connects just up. You should be able to see the old, if I can get some focus. So right in the middle of the screen there is where it plugs in. Essentially right next to the fuel filter there, but you just follow this line up, see where it plugs in and just disconnect that. And from there, you're ready to take out your two, well for me at least, two side bell housing bolts and then back and out. There's our dipstick just chilling, so I'm gonna give that a crack and hopefully get this thing out without any dramas. There it is, one automatic transmission now out of the car. We made a bit of a mess just because the angle the drum was on compared to the motor, the torque converter snout got caught on the crank. So pulled the converter out of the box and kind of peed on the ground a bit. It's all good, it's just oil, we got it sorted. So now we got this thing out and the only thing remaining to essentially remove this auto conversion from the car is the pedal up in the car, but that's Cool, we'll get to that in the next part and the flex plate so very very simple you just got the uh, how many you have there six bolts undo those six pull your flex plate off top half of the sandwich plate has to come off because you're putting a manual one on and I will mention this at the end of this video for whatever reason you decide to stop watching now when you get to this point get your new spigot bearing and put it in you do not want to forget that otherwise you won't be able to select any gears Make sure you do that. If you forget that, it's your own fault because I've warned you. But I will remind everyone in the next video, but put your spigot bearing in right now. Okay? Sweet. Why do I have to do it like that? <laughs> Make sure you do it. Anyways, that's the end of pulling all of your auto stuff out of the car. If anyone has any questions, leave a comment down below. Uh, like the video if you've enjoyed it. And next part of this series, we will start getting ready to put the manual box in.